uh, we talked about the differences between cloud ERP, Fusion ERP, and Oracle eBusiness Suite. Okay, so like uh, when we talk about the skills required to learn cloud ERP, uh, so uh, what are the skills required to learn Fusion ERP? Cloud ERP is like um, what is the difference between the uh, uh, Fusion ERP and Oracle eBusiness Suite? So like this is the in reports interface and conver in conversions. In reports, we have BI publisher, SQL clear skill. In XML publisher, in eBusiness Suite, we have XML publisher, RDF reports. All these things, interfaces and conver conversions. Conversions, we have file-based data loaders uh, and ADF desktop integration and BI reports, and all these things are there. And eBusiness Suite, we have SQL PL SQL web services, Rosso Precious services. I was on the, this one, Docs huh? I was done. I had done this thing. Yes. Uh, deployment options I want to study now. So Oracle deployment options is what? It is like a, we have a public cloud and we have a private cloud. Public cloud is what? Uh, we have A company, B company, C company, and D company. So like this is the private private cloud is like when you are deploying your cloud application in different data centers. Suppose A company, B company, C company, and D company is there. And uh, A company cannot see B company's data, B company cannot see C company's data, and C company cannot see D company data. And private cloud is what? I'm saying the opposite, sorry. It, each others can see each other's data and private cloud is what? When A company, B company, C company is there, uh, all these uh, private cloud, uh, A company, B company, A company cannot see B company's data. So like just like a WhatsApp information, I cannot see your WhatsApp information and you cannot see my WhatsApp information. Okay. So both the same, right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry? No, in public cloud, everyone can access each other. Huh. No, private public cloud, yeah. cloud, like it is deployment options. That means what is the, how are you going to deploy the Oracle application? How okay. are you going to deploy? Okay. So a company, a company is the, uh, like you're going to deploy it this way. Private cloud is what? When you're going to deploy the other way, like, uh, uh, like, like, WhatsApp information. I cannot see your WhatsApp information. You cannot see my WhatsApp information. Okay. So this is the way all these things are man are like um, all these things are uh, done in while we are sharing the data. Okay. So this is the technology changes. EBS versus fusion. EBS versus fusion. So when we talk about EBS and what about uh, when we talk about fusion. So in EBS we have Oracle app servers. In Fusion, we have Oracle Web Logic. UI, we have Forms and JSP pages. And in Fusion application, we have Oracle ADF, ADF Java server pages. Workflows, we have PLSQL, and we have DPE, that is Business Process Enterprise Limited. And we have XML Publisher, we have Fusion application, we have BI Publisher. In reports, then what kind of reports that we generate? In analysis, we have Discoverer, and Fusion applications, we have OTBI, okay? Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence. So this is the way we gather information. This is the way we this is the way we uh, gather information, and this is the way we uh, 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 this is the way we uh, uh, like you can say how can you gather that uh, how I generate reports analysis. How did this is the difference technology changes that we have in EBS versus Fusion. Okay. So functional changes. What is the functional changes we have? Let, like suppose in EBS we have responsibilities. If you have worked in EBS, we have a word called responsibilities. In Fusion application we have roles. Okay. In uh, EBS we have AME and workflow. In Fusion application we have BPM and BPEL. In EBS we have conversions. In Fusion application we have FBDI. Data migration means data migration means what? Migrating one data from legacy system to Oracle application base tables. So okay. in Fusion applications we have file based data loaders. In object, we have set up in configuration. EBS, we have application. In fusion application, we have functional setup manager. Okay. Okay. Application and UBS versus, versus fusion. Applications, we have financials, HRMS project. In fusions, we have applications, financials, HCM, and PPM. In EBS, we have database, Oracle database, Oracle fusion, we have Oracle, we have database, Oracle, and ESIS based. EBS, we have system administrator fusion, we have Oracle identity manager. So this is the way we, uh, uh, we EBS, uh, we have system administrative fusion, we have Oracle identity manager. So this is the way we generate 
the uh, uh, application changes that we have EBS water solution. Okay. So we request to developers from Oracle eBusiness Suite. Can we new? Can we develop a new user interface Oracle ERP Cloud? Yes, we can develop. We can, but using JCS SX or any other product, but not with Oracle Cloud ERP. Yes, using okay. PaaS solution, we can design custom user interface pages and integrate with Fusion. So, can we develop a new report in Cloud ERP? Absolutely, yes. Can we develop a new PLS tool package? No, there's no scope as you don't have database access directly in SaaS, but it provides an option to access data using web services. So we, we will, in PLSQL, we cannot, uh, we develop a new PLSQL package. We cannot, uh, we don't have database access in, in directly in SaaS, but provides an option to access data through web services. We can, we can access data through web services in, uh, in, in Oracle eBusiness Suite. We cannot, in Fusion, we cannot, um, we provide access to data using web services, but we have we uh, but we do so with the help of we we can with we cannot do with the help of a PLSQL package because there is no such PLSQL in Oracle eBusiness Suite. Okay. We have SQL. All all uh, Fusion application is based on SQL. So like in-house application, we have the third-party application of the company. We have in-house application uh, and we have the third-party application of the company. Any third party application of the company is there, and uh, any third party application here. We have the in house application, and uh, we have the in house uh, application, we have the third party application of a company. And uh, with this, we can uh, use, uh, we can inbound integration means like we can load data loading technique that we can load the data from one source to another source. And okay. we are supposed to load bulk data. Yeah. So okay. this is the, we have the special data loaders, payroll batch loaders, XTM data loaders, all these are data loading tools which are available in Oracle Fusion application. Okay. And we use, that is used to load the data from one Fusion application bulk legacy system to another. Okay. 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 Now we have the Fusion application outbound integration. Outbound integration is what? That is the any third party application of the company. That is X ADP banks benefit vendors like how you outsource your data from one one uh, application to another. That means suppose you're outsourcing outsourcing your payroll, the payroll of the company. Okay. You're outsourcing the payroll of the company to another third party vendor. That means okay. that means you can say I will not run the payroll. I will not run the payroll from my own company. I will run the payroll the third party application the third party person will uh, will run my payroll i will okay. not uh, i will not take the uh, you can say the pressure of handling the payroll of the employees okay. so i will outsource everything to the third party vendors okay so that is called outbound integration okay now okay. coming to full project fusion uh, infusion project implementation 70% of our work goes into now inbound and outbound integration that is inbound integration includes one time data conversion ongoing data sync process Outbound integration includes sending data to maintain to maintain in-house application files for our company third-party vendors and payroll vendors like ADP. In US, we have benefit vendors like Eight Now. So, like outbound integration is what that is sending files files from a company third-party vendors and payroll vendors like ADP. And US, we have benefit vendors like Eight Now. In US, what we have benefit vendors like Eight Now is there, where we used to outbound the integration. Outbound integration is like um, outsourcing the data from uh, two different companies. That means I, I just gave an example of why we are outsourcing the data, uh, how we are outsourcing the payroll of the company. So how we outsource the payroll of the company? We are outsourcing the payroll of the company by benefit by uh, benefit providers like vendors like Aetna. So this is the in US. This is the example. We have the benefit vendors like Aetna is there. No, I think here it is like that. Okay, we are just for my understanding. Okay, we'll process the payroll from XCM. For example, XCM will calculate everything. For payment, we should send the details to a bank, right? Yeah. Something like that. Well, I'm outsourcing the profile. I'm outsourcing okay. the uh, uh, benefit vendors from one. Uh, uh, from my payroll of the company will be run will be uh, run by. Uh, I am going to outsource the payroll of the company to another company. Okay, so they will handle my uh, payroll. Okay. Nobody else will handle. They will handle my payroll. I will not handle. Okay. Okay. 
that means okay. if you are running the payroll of the company i will not run the payroll of the company somebody else will uh, uh, run the payroll of the company and they will they will bill the employees okay okay fine okay so this is the way outbound integration includes files for the company third party vendors payroll vendors like adp in us we have benefit vendors like etna okay. so now we have data migration integration and spend. inbound integration our oracle erp cloud service provides the following methods of inbound integration of data application development framework desktop integration rest api soap web services file based data import moderate or heavy data load file based data hcl hcm data loaders then we have file based data loaders forward heavy data load file based data loaders hcm data loaders and we have the onward integration extraction from oracle erp cloud service to third party or legacy on premise system can be formed either by manual otbi report automated method is method is bi report with oracle erp integration system Okay. Inbound integration provides the all following methods for inbound for inbound integration of data. File based data loaders we have moderate or heavy data load. File based data we have HCM data loaders. Onboard integration data integration from Oracle ERP cloud service or third party or legacy system can be performed by manual OTD or BI report or automated report based. We have the for data extraction. Data extraction is what we have to extract the data. If you have okay. to extract the data, ha na, ha okay. You have to extract the data. If you have to extract the data, you will use, and you have to generate a report. Okay. We have to do it manually, or we can do it automatically. So manually, we have the OTB and BIP report for data extraction, and for automated method, we have BI report with Oracle ERP integration. Okay. Okay. And okay. then we have inbound integration provides the following methods of inbound integration: application, desktop, development framework. We have SOAP based web services. We have REST API, file based data loaders. file based data loader hcm data loaders and moderate for, for we have moderate heavy data load and for file based load data loaders we have hcm data loaders that is hdl okay so i will teach you what is hcm data loaders and fbdl okay. I, i will teach you okay in the later uh, sessions okay so environment when we talk about cloud in saas same server multiple cloud in saas we have no dbas no technical role no only functional role cloud okay. same server multiple cloud when we talk about individual server dedicated to clients we have pass as a service we have no dba involved we have technical role and functional role is there okay and uh, uh, function technical and functional role both are, both are there on premise when we go to on premise on premise when we talk about evs we have a dba person we have a technical role and we have a functional role on premise means when we are working on when we working on evs you have worked on evs right yeah yeah ha ah, so when we work on evs you will realize that we don't have a D, we have a dba person sorry we don't we have a dba person involved okay. we have a technical role we have a functional role okay and in cloud we have no dba involved that means if you using the instance we don't have to go for we don't have to go for any uh, dba person involved when we are using the instance directly the, the person will install the uh, the the system instance will be installed and there is no Third party person involved in that. Okay. Okay. Now, why fusion? So, what is on on premise? And when we go to cloud, on premise is what? On premise is when we buy license, we buy server, we hire the DBA. DBA will install high network admin, maintenance charges, upgradation charges, project start. We have to buy license. We have to buy the server. We have to hire the DBA. In cloud, we don't have to subscribe to application. We have no server. We have no DBA. We have no install. It's already installed. No admin, admin tenant charges, no upgrade charges, no project will automatically start. So this is the way cloud goes on. Okay. Okay. This is the way the cloud goes on. Okay. So everything is done and done by Oracle. We can say Oracle will provide ah, everything. Everything will be. There is no server, no DB involved. That means in EBS, what we say on premise when we go to on premise, we have to hire the DBA person and okay. we have to install everything. we have to do the patching everything cloning patching everything we have to do okay and uh, we have to do cloning patching everything but in on premise when we go to cloud there is nothing involved okay got it got it okay now we till now we are going we have done the theoretical part of the oracle fusion application okay, okay. so we have yeah. done the theoretical part that is what is the theory, what is application what is uh, fusion application its architecture the difference between evs technology changes evs and fusion what is the application changes that we have done till now 
now up right up like till uh, from today onwards we are going to start about hcm implementation functional setup manager so what is functional setup manager it is a tool to set up different fusion application and it is called functional setup manager if fsm it oh. is also a guided platform to configure different application it is common across various applications such as financials hcm and scm so we functional setup manager is a what it's a tool to set up different fusion application okay and uh, okay. Uh, functional setup manager it's a major tool to uh, set up the different uh, uh functional setup different functional setup manager it's also a, a guided platform to convert different applications it's a common across various applications such as financial hcm and human capital management what is functional setup manager key benefits of using functional setup manager self service administration complete transparency comfortable and extensible features in self service administration that means when you use a functional setup manager we have a complete transparency complete and extensible and extensible features reusable templates for rapid start and consistency for the organization's comprehensive reporting so that is the functional setup manager of we have that is called functional setup key benefits of fsm fsm is law when we have a key complete transparency comfortable and extensive features we have reusable templates for rapid start and completeness across organizations so oracle application super user could perform all tasks in your fusion application implementation project however it is a good practice to allocate implementation tasks to one or more implementation user, users so when we are talking about implementation implementation responsibilities we have two types of things we have a job role and we have a position role implementation responsibilities uh, we have the creation of uh, uh, when we talk about the implementation project uh, these are the implementation projects we have and uh, and creation of users and uh, in uh, we have the different Im implementation uh, uh, what we call it roles we have different roles and different uh, uh, you can say uh, different implementation projects are there and we have different roles for that implementation project so roles means what application so these are very important when you talk about fusion application so these okay. are certain roles which we which will automatically come and which will automatically be there when it is when you are working on the fusion app so okay. whenever you start anything this is very important it security manager application implementation manager application implementation consultant and product data steward so you have to mug up these things what is this thing it security manager the application implementation and the application implementation consultant product data steward so you have to learn these things what what is this all about okay oh, okay implementation project what is implementation project so implementation project is a list of set up set up of tasks that are required for implementation of specific offerings and it option implementation project is also foundation for identity the setup data which is important important which order So implementation project is what it's a list of tasks that is required for implementation of specific offerings and later options. Okay. This is what list of requirements that a task required to enable business functionality. Task list is like it's a you have to there's a task list and a task list in that project we have the different task list. Scope we have set the context of task list and set up data to import export. That means scope. What is the scope of the project and what is this? Uh, to import and export the data okay. so we have application implementation application implementation manager application implementation consultant these are all the roles okay job roles and hcm application administrator and functional users what is users so, are just job role responsible for managing the overall implementation of oracle fusion application application implementation is just the super user swap job role functional setup manager with access to all setup functionality users with job role have access to all hcm setup tasks and functional users subject matter experts from the line of business functional users who are what subject matter experts from the line of business and application implementation manager users with the job role are responsible for managing the overall implementation of oracle fusion app so this is the application implementation manager application implementation consultant there is a super user job role functional setup manager with access to all setup functionality that means if there is a super user job role functional setup manager with access to all setup functionality this <coughs> we have the just remember these all these are whatever it is done done in blue these are all job roles 
Okay. And you have to configure uh, the these things: application implementation manager, application implementation consultant, product data steward is not written there. IT security manager. All these things you have to configure it when you are working on the application. Okay. So, what is data role and security profile and manage geographies? So these are two two different topics. When you work on the fusion application, I will show it to you. What is data role and security profile? How do you manage geographies? Okay. Manage enterprise and legal entity. Okay. Enterprise and legal entity is manage enterprise XM information, reference data set and business. So what is the manage reference set and data set? Uh, we have to de determine that uh, enterprise and legal entity. Yeah. So enterprise and legal entity is what when we have to talk about legal address, legal and legislative data group, legal entity manage legal entity XM information. Reference data set. We have managed reference data sets, managed business units, and business set assignments. Locations and organizations. We have to define the locations, divisions, discipline, reporting, establishment, managed organization trees. Compensation. We have managed salary basis, salary grade, salary grade rates, salary grade ladders. Jobs and positions. We have managed jobs and positions, managed jobs, managed positions, managed position trees. So all these things we are going to learn one by one. Okay. 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 So enterprise structures agenda. What is the enterprise structure agenda? That means enterprise structure. What is the enterprise structure? Enterprise structure contains your enterprise. That is the highest level of enterprise, highest level of the business unit. Then we have the division. Then we have the business unit. Then we have the legal entity. Then we have the department. Then we have reference data sharing, enterprise structure configurator. So one by one, we are going to learn what is this enterprise, what is division, what is business unit, what is legal entity, what is department. Okay, now coming to business factors, segmentary, and when we talk about enterprise, so first was for enterprise. So first, we are going to discuss what is enterprise. Enterprise is what business factors segmentary to act functions we have a taken care by business units enterprise. So when we talk about enterprise, and uh, we have the business factors taken care by the business units A, B, C, D, E. So all these are business operations that taking taking place. That is the highest level of business access. Then we have the legal access taken by a legal entity. We have the USA company, France company, UK company. So these things taken care by the legal entity. All these things are taken care by the legal entity. Okay. And legal access taken by care by the legal entity. And functional access is what? Functional access is what? That is the sales team, manufacturing team, R and T. These are the uh, functional uh, business operations taken by the functional team, functional setup. Okay, fine. Then we have the enterprise LDG. Enterprise is the highest level of structure. LDG is what? LDG is the le legislative data group. Okay, that means. Okay. That means what? Legislative data group means. Legislative data group is what? It is the country specific later legislative data group, and it is country specific. That means every country has a legislative data group. So when you operate. In country specific, okay. When you come operate in country specific in a country, okay. Okay. When you are operating in a country, a country is called a. a, a every country has a legislative data group. So if in, we are talking about India, then it is India has India LDG, Japan has Japan LDG, China has China LDG. Okay. 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 So this is the way we let me I'll I'll tell you later on. Payroll uh, payroll statutory unit is what it is a part of a legal entity which deals with financial transactions. Legal employer is what legal employer is also a legal entity which employs people which people which employs people. Tax regulatory unit kya like it is what a tax regulatory unit is also a legal entity which it which is dealing with a that is also a legal entity which is dealing with tax reporting structure of the organization. Okay, infusion corp. Then we have the infusion corp. Infusion corp is what? That is the highest level of enterprise structure. Infusion okay. corp. That is the. Uh, I'll give. I'll just give an example. This is the. Uh, uh, just exa just an example. Infusion corp is the uh, first. Uh, this thing. Second, we have India LDG. Third, we have India PSU. Second, we have uh, India LDG. India PSU means payroll statutory unit. Payroll statutory unit has two things: India insurance and India banking. And uh, we have India insurance. We have Kerala and Karnataka. 
and india banking we have uh, tru we have up tru and west bengal tru that is tax reporting unit of up and west bengal tax tax reporting unit okay okay, okay. so like this is the way and uh, india fusion in fusion india insurance we have kerala tru and karnataka tru in fusion india banking we have up tru and west bengal tru so this is the way we have divided the organization structure so india insurance we have kerala tru and karnataka tru tax reporting unit and india banking we have up tax reporting unit and west bengal tax reporting unit okay. so infusion is the company name don't say it's a fusion application infusion corp is the company name it is the enterprise highest level is enterprise then okay. we have india ldg that is the legis legislative data group so it can be india usa canada australia it can be any ldg is country specific okay, okay. india okay. csc is what payroll statutory unit infusion okay. india insurance and india banking okay okay so this is the way we do it okay now coming to uh, difference between fusion e business suite and people soft we have the enterprise that is the highest level in fusion then we have the e business ultimate legal entity when in people soft we have company divisions business unit department legal entity legislative data group payroll statutory unit tax reporting unit so what we have business unit operating unit in in fusion we have business unit in the same business unit will be called an operating unit in e business suite in people soft is called business unit okay okay and in legal entity uh, in fusion we have legal entity in e business unit suite that is also called a legal entity in people soft we have company in fusion we have ldg in e business suite we have business group in people soft we have regulatory session in fusion we have payroll statutory unit in e business suite we have tax group and in people soft we have company pay master in fusion we have tax reporting unit in e business suite we have government reporting entity and uh, now in uh, another field is reference data set reference data set is used in fusion and in Fu in people soft we have called set asset id it is called set id so this is the four things that we have set enable we have rates job locations and departments okay Okay. So now we have enterprise structure configurator. Enterprise structure configurator is an interview-based tool that guides you to the configuration of the enterprise structure, and it is like a, a part of the setup to define the organization, job, position, structure of the enterprise. So what is enterprise structure configurator? Enterprise enterprise establish enterprise structure. So when we talk about the enterprise structure configurator, it is an interview-based tool. What is enterprise structure? It is an interview-based tool that guides you to the configuration of your enterprise structure. That means. it is an uh, interview based tool that guides you to the interview based tool means like there is a set a set 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 by uh, sorry step by step process of defining the enterprise structure configurator that means organizations job position structure and we have the uh, we have the interview based tool and uh, we have the structure which is very uh, uh, defined in a proper manner Okay. okay, so that okay. is called enterprise structure configurator. Step by step structure is there. First, you have to define the the job, then position, then okay. location. So all these things are there. Okay. That is we call it interview based tool. Then we call enterprise structure configurator. What is the established enterprise structure? We have divisions, we have legal entities, we have business units, we have reference data sets, we have business unit assignment, assigned reference pool, reference set to schools. So all these uh, things are there. What is enterprise structure configurator? We have enterprise Establish enterprise structure. We have divisions. We have legal entities, uh, divisions, business units, reference data sets, business unit set assignment, assigned reference set locations. What we have enterprise structure configurator. Then first we define the divisions. Then okay. enterprise structure. Enterprise structure is the highest level. Then we have divide def define the divisions, legal entities, business units, reference data sets, business unit set information, assigned reference data set. Then what is Define enterprise structure. So enterprise structure is the customer's organization structure. I access the enterprise structure. Task use enterprise structure as part of the in, uh, in, in setup to define the organization structure, job and position structure. Use enterprise configurator. We can create all organization structures at one time. Create multiple organization to test multiple scenarios. Organization hierarchy tree is created. So when we talk about the enterprise structure configurator. we talk about the uh, the enterprise uh, uh, enterprise structure configurator and we talk about the organization structures at one time create multiple configurations to test multiple scenarios organization hierarchy is created so this is the way we set up this is an example i am giving first we talk about establish enterprise structure we have tata 
then we have managed division we have tata motors and tcs managed legal entity we have taxation country when then we have created a business unit then we create a business unit managed business unit managed reference data sets we managed eu assignment then we have managed location reference data set so this is the way we define different organization setup division legal entity business unit reference data set bu set location reference set so this is the way we do it okay Okay. Now, next step, next step is defines actions and action reasons. What are actions? Actions track changes to human capital records. For example, changes to employment and assignment records. When you create or update these records, the action identifies the cause of the creation or change. You can optionally associate reasons with actions. For example, a generic action of termination could have reasons such as voluntary retirement or involuntary layoff. Action track changes to human capital management. that is when you create or update this record the action identifies the cause of creation or change action means like whenever you define any anything suppose any uh uh uh, uh setup any change any action that is suppose a termination an employment a hiring part okay hiring part whenever you taking about the hiring part the employment uh, action a hiring part then uh, suppose transferred uh, then promotion all these things so when we talk about these things we talk about the uh, we could have any reasons so that this this action of could have uh, this cause voluntary retirement or involuntary layoff so this when you create or update this record the action identifies the cause of the creation or change so when you talk about these things you can optionally you can uh, also talk about voluntary retirement involuntary layoff so all these are called actions and it is associated with any action reasons okay, okay? okay so that is called action and action reasons so you have when you, any changes you make to the application any when you create a record or update and record that happens in sql any okay. creation or updation this action identifies the cause of creation or changes okay so define legal entity it is very important it is an interview question it asks everywhere what is legal and what is the difference between a legal entity and a legal employer legal entity is kya is what it's a recognized party with rights and responsibilities given of by the legislation legal entity have the right to own property the right to train the responsibility to repay debt and responsibility to account themselves to regulations taxation authorities and owners according to the rules specially specified in the relevant legislation legal entity is what when you own right to own property repay debt when you set up the legal entities you can when you set up the legal entities you can identify them as legal employers and payroll statutory units when you talk about legal entities legal entities can also be legal employers and legal employers can all and legal entities can also be payroll statutory units okay so difference is then what is the difference between legal entity and legal employer legal entity is a <coughs> taxation pay, where taxes taxes are paid okay okay legal employer is what uh, legal employer is what legal employer when you employ people okay Okay, a tax reporting unit is created automatically when you add a legal entity and identify it as a payroll side. Depending on how your organization is structured, you may have only one legal entity that is also a payroll statutory unit and a legal employer, or you may have multiple legal entities, payroll statutory unit, or legal employers. Okay. <coughs> so, legal legislative data group are means of partitioning payroll. and relevant data what is a legislative data group a legislative data group is a means of partitioning the payroll related data at least one ldg is required for each country where the enterprise operates each ldg is associated with one or more payroll statutory unit ldg is what is country specific and for each country it's written date for each country where the enterprise operates associated legal entity with ldg and why we need ldg because we can't hire employees and we can't run payroll of the company so we need ldg okay okay that is okay. why we need ldg okay workforce life cycle so when we talk about enterprise hcm information what is workforce life cycle we have the employment model employment terms work day information work per number generation Personal number generation, assignment number generation, personal number changes. What is three tier employment model and what is two tier employment model? Three tier is inflo involves the uh, work relationship and the assignment, and two tier employment model involves a uh, work relation and two assignments. Sorry, I'm saying the opposite. 
three tire has two assignments and two tire has one assignment work relationship now work what is work relationship i'll tell you what is work relationship the work relationship is the relationship between the employer and the employee and work relationship is legal employer worker data hire data worker type employee contingent worker or non workers and what are the worker type it is employee contingent workers or non workers non workers okay employment okay. terms are what business units contract details job position grade department work hours payroll details employment okay. terms are what ha uh, employment terms are what it is like a contract details okay. it can be job position grade department work hours payroll details an assignment is what assignment contains assignment number assignment status business unit business department person type job position grade manager salary details so all these okay. things are called assignment details and work relationship is called legal employer work on type hire data employee contingent work or non workers so all these things can create a workers a, a non a work that is called work relationship uh, okay work relationship is called is a is a relationship between a person and the legal employer okay between the person and the legal employer all wall work relationship must at least contain one assignment okay <coughs> primary there is so what is called primary work relationship what is called there can be one uh there can be one work relationship there can be two work relationship a work relationship is what a uh, a uh, uh, a primary work relationship a worker or non worker must have one work relationship that means one person assignment on which one assignment the person is working okay. assignment you understand now what is the assignment yeah, yeah, same uh, we know anyway it is like ha. ebs like job department like ha, that ha 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 terminate the primary work relationship that means you terminate the work relationship not workers or non workers Okay. Terminate the primary work. You terminate the work relationship, not workers and non-workers. That means you, when you terminate the primary work relationship, you are not terminating the work relationship. Uh, when you term, ha, terminate the, you, if you're terminating the employee, you're not terminating the employee. You have to terminate the work relationship first. Okay. Not the workers and non-workers. You have to terminate the work relationship. Okay. Okay, now I'll, it, it, I have given some examples to understand the work relationship and and yes. this thing. Then we have orchard rates. Orchard rates is what? It's the name of the employee and work relation. Orchard rates have a work relationship: employee, contingent worker, non-workers. Okay. Oh. And uh, <coughs> employee has a work work relationship with uh, in Fusion US. If the main uh, U.S. main uh, what is what we call it in Fusion U.S. is the main head, okay? okay. It's the main company name, okay? And okay. it has a work relationship. That employee has a work relationship, a uh, work relationship with in Fusion U.S. Okay. Now, uh, uh, now, you know, it's is also if he holds a contingent worker profile, contingent worker, you understand? Yeah, contingent worker is not an employee like a contract worker. Contract worker, ha, huh? not on the payroll of the company. Okay. So work relationship in fusion is a contractual worker, contingent worker, and he holds an assignment, a second assignment. Then work relationship in fusion US also has a non-worker, he holds a th third third assignment. So orchard rates can, so this is the way orchard rates can work. So he's an employee, non-worker, and a contingent worker. No, no, he cannot be three things at the same time. If he is em employing as a If he is employed as an employee, he holds yeah. one assignment. If he holds as a contingent worker, he holds the second assignment. If he holds a non-worker, he's he's holding a different assignment. So okay. it's just an example of okay. how a person can be treated as a work in a work relationship as an employee, as contingent worker, as a non-worker. Okay. Okay. Now, what is oh. global person model? Global okay. person model, like suppose you have you are working in a for an organization, okay, and you okay. have an employee number. Okay. All workers, non-workers contacts have a single person record in the enterprise, which is identified in the person number. All workers, non-workers, and contacts have a single person record in the which is identified in the person number. All the workers, non-workers contacts have a single person record in the which is identified as the person number. Any worker, non-worker, or contacts or contacts means that means relationship with the person with the employee and. Uh, In relation with the employee, I employ all of them have a, having a single person record in the end enterprise. So you cannot create person record in isolation because person record requires one of the following: a current and past future relationship with the legal employer. So okay. what is this? 
you cannot create person record in isolation because person record requires one of the following a current past future relationship with the legal employer okay so they should have been assigned one assignment right huh. i cannot create person record in isolation a person record cannot create in isolation because person record requires one of the following one person has to be there a current or future past relationship with the legal employer that means a person that means uh, with the legal employer we have we cannot create person record in isolation because person record requires one of the following uh, a current and future past relationship with the legal employer and okay. uh, it cannot create anything in isolation yes that means uh, that means it has suppose i have a record in the organization i have an employee number so that is having a current and past future relationship with the legal employee that means if i am supposed to be terminated and suppose i am going to be rehired so that i have still have the employee record in the organization okay i still have the employee record yes okay the person records okay. holds information that is personal such as name date of birth by contracts work relationship called employee relationship this job payroll and working hours so okay. all these things uh, holds uh, information that is personal as is name date of birth and contracts work relationship called employment relationship such as job payroll and working hours okay